Do you want to feel more confident reading in English? Well, that's exactly what we'll do today because we're going to read a news article together. So by the end of this lesson, you feel a lot more confident reading in English. Welcome back to G4's English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now let's get started. First, I'll read the headline. The store's snubbing Black Friday's mega sales. We're talking about Black Friday. Now, you might be wondering, well, what does it mean to snub? So let's talk about this. Here, snub is a verb. And when you snub someone, or in this case, something, you insult them and you do that by not giving them any attention. So the stores are insulting Black Friday by not participating, by not offering any sales. To be honest, we more commonly use the verb snub with a person. For example, if Rasha snubbed me, it means she didn't give me any attention and therefore I felt insulted. So maybe I said, oh, hey, Rasha, and she just kept on walking or she maybe gave me a head nod and then kept on walking and I felt insulted. So put in the comments, I wouldn't snub you, Jennifer, to mean that if I say hi, you would say hi right back. Now, remember, you can use this with someone. I wouldn't snub you, but you can also use this with a something like Black Friday. So you could say, I wouldn't snub your videos. So that means if you saw a notification for my vi video and you just said, Ugh, that's not going to be good. <laughs> you ignored my video and therefore you insulted me. So don't do that. I wouldn't snub your videos, Jennifer. Put that in the comments and don't worry about taking these notes because I summarize everything in a free lesson PDF. You can look in the description to download it. So our topic is the stores snubbing Black Friday's mega sales. Mega means really big, really big sales. Of course, the sales you find on Black Friday. Many retailers flaunt rock bottom prices the day after Thanksgiving. When you flaunt something, it means you intentionally advertise that something. Intentionally means you do it on purpose and you do it in a way that others admire it. So in this case, the retailers, that means the stores, the stores flaunt, they advertise their rock bottom prices. Rock bottom means the lowest possible level. So the lowest possible price that you'll buy this TV for, they flaunt it. They advertise it in a way that makes you say, Oh, that's awesome. I really want that. So in a store context, this is a good thing, but we frequently use this in a negative way to describe people. For example, my sister always flaunts her big bonuses. So she advertises her bonuses. Oh, look how much money I made. Oh, look at this fancy shirt I bought. Look at my nice jewelry I bought with my big bonus. So we do it more in a negative way when someone flaunts something. So just keep that in mind. Many retailers flaunt rock bottom prices the day after Thanksgiving, but others opt out of the shopping frenzy. When you opt out of something, it means you don't participate in it. So other retailers, other stores are opting out of Black Friday. They're not participating in it. Opt out of the shopping frenzy. A frenzy is exactly what you see in this picture. It's uncontrolled but excited behavior. So everyone is very excited because they're getting this TV for $100, 80% off, but it's also uncontrolled. They're probably going to push each other. They're going to grab at things. So it's uncontrolled, but excited, not necessarily a positive thing. For example, there was a frenzy after the team won a World Cup the World Cup, not a World Cup, because there's only one. So the World Cup. Are you enjoying this lesson? 
If you are, then I want to tell you about the Finally Fluent Academy. This is my premium training program where we study native English speakers from TV, the movies, YouTube, and the news so you can improve your listening skills of fast English, expand your vocabulary with natural expressions, and learn advanced grammar easily. Plus, you'll have me as your personal coach. You can look in the description for the link to learn more, or you can go to my website and click on Finally Fluent Academy. Now let's continue with our lesson. Ethics, image, and margins all play a part in the calculus. So margins, this is another word for profit. Profit is the money the store earns from selling a television product or service, but it's after expenses. Let's continue. For many shoppers, Black Friday kicks off the zenith of the shopping season. Here, kick off, this means start. So Black Friday starts the zenith. Notice the pronunciation. We have that long E, Z, zenith. Zenith, the zenith of the shopping season, it means the highest point. So Black Friday is the best shopping day for retailers. It's the day they make most of their money. That's the zenith of the shopping season. In the U.S., nearly 73 million people visited a brick and mortar store. Brick and mortar, that's a way of describing a physical store because a physical store is made out of bricks and mortar. So that's where the expression comes from. It's a physical store during 2020's Thanksgiving holiday weekend with billions spent online too. I wrote that here for you, physical store, brick and mortar store. Now, I haven't asked you yet. Are you opting in or out of Black Friday? Remember, if you opt out of Black Friday, it means you're not participating in Black Friday. But if you're opting into Black Friday, you are participating. So you're going to go to the store or online and buy things. So you can put opt in or opt out in the comments to let me know if you're going to participate. Okay, let's continue. Every year, shoppers mob stores for steep markdowns. To mob a store, that's when you form a very large group. But that group could be formed for admiration, interest, or anger. So a mob or two mob can be a positive thing or it can turn into a negative, violent thing as well, which sometimes happens on Black Friday. So this is also an example of people mobbing the store. They're going to the store as a very large group and there's a lot of high emotion involved. You can probably understand it's easy for this situation to turn more negative. Now, it says every year shoppers mob stores for steep markdowns. So in this case, a markdown is a discounted price. So it went from $100 to $90. That's a markdown. But a steep markdown is a highly discounted price. So from $100 to $20, so 80% off. That would be a steep markdown. Widely circulated videos on social media often highlight the chaos wrought on stores themselves. Wrought on is not very common and you likely won't use it in your vocabulary, but just so you understand what it means, it means caused by. So chaos is when there is a lot of uncontrollables. Like in this situation, people are acting chaotically. This situation, you could describe it as having a lot of chaos. Now, the stores, the highlight, the chaos wrought on stores themselves. So it was this chaos is caused by the stores because they're the ones who are advertising 80% off. So they're going to give some examples of the chaos display banners torn down. When something is torn down, it is taken from uh, the surface, like the wall, but in a very 
a disorganized way. So you just tear it down, torn down. Shelves stripped bare. Stripped bare means they've taken everything off the shelf. So you see a shelf where there were supposed to be televisions and there's nothing there. You just see a torn down banner and even occasional spats of violence. A spat of violence simply means a small period of violence. But some retailers balk at Black Friday's consumerism culture. Let's talk about to balk, balk, awk, balk. That L is silent. Balk, balk. Some retailers balk at Black Friday's consumerism culture. When you balk at something, you're unwilling to do it. And you usually have the reaction like, oh, oh, no. So if, let's say I was buying a new car and I went to the dealer and I saw this car and I liked it, but then they told me the price and I, oh, I balked at the price and I said, I'm not paying that. Are you crazy? Because I thought it was way too expensive. Now you could also balk at doing something. I balked at the idea of working on Saturday. So a client asked me, oh, can you do this project on Saturday? <laughs> Saturday? No, I'm not doing that. I'm not working on Saturday. So just your strong negative reaction to something that shows your unwillingness to do it, that is you balking at the idea. A few retailers don't open at all. So this is an example of them opting out of Black Friday. Not only are they not offering a discount, a markdown, they're closing. They're not even opening. <laughs> a few retailers don't open at all. For some brands, the decision is motivated by their corporate values and image. Retailers that appeal to environmentally and socially conscious shoppers often don't feed this frenzy for profit. So remember the frenzy, that's this, this chaos, right? This frenzy. So this, this large group with this very strong emotion. So you can imagine that for some brands, they don't want this image associated with their brand. They don't want to see a highlight or a news headline about customers getting into fights at their stores to buy the last television. Some brands just might not want that. They might balk at the idea, we're not doing that. Beyond corporate values, a brand's image also drives this decision. So in this case, the brand's image drives this decision. So it motivates this decision. It's the reason why this decision was made. So the brand's image also drives this decision. I wrote that for you. Would it seem out of place for a business to offer sales? Would it devalue the brand to do so? If something seems out of place, it means that it isn't appropriate for the setting. Here's an example. Jeremy looked out of place or you could use seemed out of place at the wedding. So... He didn't look like he belonged at the wedding. Now let's look at why. Everyone was wearing a suit, but he was wearing jeans. So he looked out of place. He looked like he didn't belong. He looked inappropriate for this specific context. Of course, wearing jeans, there's nothing wrong with that. But maybe a wedding isn't the appropriate place to do that. So because of that, he looked out of place. So this is what a store should ask them. Would it seem out of place for a business to offer sales? Would it devalue the brand to do so? Devalue, it means to make it less valuable. For example, fake Louis Vuitton 
banks devalue the brand. Whenever I go to the airport, I always notice how many bags and luggage suitcases have the Louis Vuitton logo on them. But I know that probably 90% of those bags are fake. They're not actually Louis Vuitton because Louis Vuitton is an extremely expensive brand. But the existence of those fake bags makes the real bag less valuable because if I'm carrying a real Louis Vuitton bag and I look around and see 10 other people carrying fake Louis Vuitton bags, it makes my bag less special. So fake Louis Vuitton bags devalue the brand. This is just my personal opinion. Maybe you don't agree with that. Let's continue. Aside from reputation, for some stores, Black Friday simply isn't a practical business move. In this case, I'll move a practical business move. Move means decision, action, or strategy. It's very commonly used in a business context or in the context of you taking action to reach your goals, whatever that goal may be. So when a student signs up to the Finally Fluent Academy, I might reply back and say, signing up for the Finally Fluent Academy was a great move. That was a great move. Great move. So it means a great decision, a great strategy, a great action that you just took. Oh, that was such a great move. Or you might say, signing up for the Finally Fluent Academy was a great move. And I have many students on my website who have said that. (laughs) So hopefully you'll be the next one. In retail marketing, prevailing trends show loyal customers often become repeat customers. Let's talk about prevailing trends. A trend just describes how people generally behave. And prevailing means that it's existing now and it's accepted. So let me give you an example. Trends show that Canadians travel the most in in winter. So this is how people generally behave. So obviously there are many Canadians that don't travel in winter, but this is the trend. Generally, people do this. So if you're a travel company, you would want to advertise to Canadians in winter because that's when we generally travel. Now you could say prevailing trends show that Canadians travel the most in winter. Prevailing just makes it a little stronger. It sounds like, well, this is taking place now and this is accepted as a fact right now. So you don't need to include it. It just makes it a little bit stronger. In retail marketing, prevailing trends show loyal customers often become repeat customers. So this is how generally people behave, but it doesn't mean it happens in every case and offer longer lifetime value to a brand. They are also generally easier to maintain than constantly finding new ones. So this is saying why a company might want to opt out of Black Friday and instead try to develop loyal customers who buy from you regardless of sales, regardless of time of year. Appealing to bargain hunters. I like this line. (laughs) A bargain hunter is someone who is constantly looking for, hunting for a bargain. A bargain is when you get something for less money than it normally costs. And I kind of laughed because generally being a bargain hunter is not really considered a positive thing. Some people might consider it, but I would say a lot of people don't consider it a positive thing. It's a little bit of an insult to call someone a bargain hunter. It's like calling them cheap, meaning that they don't like spending money. They'll only spend money if they get a discount. I wrote that for you. 
Appealing to bargain hunters through massive Black Friday discounts. Remember, we learned before steep markdowns. You could use that because that would be a massive discount. A massive means really large. And that's what a steep markdown is. So same thing. Appealing to bargain hunters through massive Black Friday discounts may even turn core shoppers off. Okay, let's look at this. Because we have turn and then someone or something, someone, core shoppers, and then off. So let's look at this phrasal verb. The phrasal verb is to turn someone off. And this is when you stop someone from feeling interested. But very important note, this is often used in a sexual way. You can use it in a non-sexual way, but to do so, you just make sure the context is obvious. If the context is not obvious, someone may interpret this as a sexual meaning. But in this case, the context is obvious, so it, it doesn't apply to sexual relations at all. I was going to apply for the promotion, but having to work Saturday really turned me off. So this having to work Saturday caused me to not be interested in the promotion. Okay. So remember to stop someone from feeling interested. So discounts may even turn core shoppers off. They might not be interested in your brand. For example, Louis Vuitton or other prestigious brands if they offer discounts on Black Friday. Now they're actually giving the reason. The disc so appealing to bargain hunters through massive Black Friday discounts may even turn core shoppers off if Hordes of bargain hunters plow through a store looking for deals and disrupt them. Ah, okay. So I'm shopping for my Louis Vuitton bag and then all of a sudden hordes of bargain hunters, people looking for a deal, come into the store and now I am bothered and this turns me off and I don't want to shop at Louis Vuitton. I'm using this as an example. I've never bought anything from Louis Vuitton. <laughs> this is just an example. It was the first brand I thought of. Okay, hordes means many people. So it, it again describes a very large crowd. Hordes of bargain hunters, a large group of bargain hunters, if they plow through. To plow through is when you go through something like the store, but it's difficult because there's so many people around. You have to get your elbows up. It's difficult. So plow through a store looking for deals and disrupt them. There are many reasons retailers may snub. Ah, now you know what this means to snub. Remember, it's when you ignore someone, you don't give them any attention and that insults them. So the retailers snub Black Friday. They don't give it any attention. Snub Black Friday, but at the core... So at the core, they're saying there are many reasons, but at the core, so the core would be the most important reason. At the core, it's about how the shopping bonanza, let's talk about this, the shopping bonanza, a bonanza for a store is an event that produces a lot of profit. And remember, margins is another word for profit. So you can say a lot of margins, a lot of profit is about how the shopping bonanza, so this event is Black Friday. So it's about how Black Friday, the shopping bonanza is Black Friday. How the shopping bonanza plays into a store's business strategy. Ultimately, the long-term view is what matters. In this case, ultimately, it's used to emphasize the most important fact in a situation. So this article mentioned many reasons why stores might opt out of Black Friday, why they might snub or balk at Black Friday. And the most important fact is right here. Ultimately, the long-term view is what matters. 
So you learned a lot of great vocabulary. Now what I'll do is I'll read the article from start to finish, and this time you can focus on my pronunciation. The stores snubbing Black Friday's mega sales. Many retailers flaunt rock bottom prices the day after Thanksgiving, but others opt out of the shopping frenzy. Ethics, image, and margins all play a part in the calculus. For many shoppers, Black Friday kicks off the zenith of the shopping season. In the U.S., nearly 73 million people visited a brick-and-mortar store during 2020's Thanksgiving holiday weekend, with billions spent online too. Every year, shoppers mob stores for steep markdowns. Widely circulated videos on social media often highlight the chaos wrought on stores themselves: display banners torn down, shelves stripped bare, and even occasional spats of violence. But some retailers balk at Black Friday's consumerism culture. A few retailers don't open at all. For some brands, the decision is motivated by their corporate values and image. Retailers that appeal to environmentally and socially conscious shoppers often don't feed this frenzy for profit. Beyond corporate values, a brand's image also drives this decision. Would it seem out of place for a business to offer sales? Would it devalue the brand to do so? Aside from reputation. For some stores, Black Friday simply isn't a practical business move. In retail marketing, prevailing trends show loyal. Customers often become repeat customers, and offer longer lifetime value to a brand. They are also generally easier to maintain than constantly finding new ones. Appealing to bargain hunters through massive Black Friday discounts may even turn core shoppers off if hordes of bargain hunters plow through a store looking for deals and disrupt them. There are many reasons retailers may snub Black Friday, but at the core, it's about how the shopping bonanza plays into a store's business strategy. Ultimately, the long-term view is what matters. Did you enjoy this lesson? Do you want me to make more lessons where we review news articles together? If you do, then put. I'm ready in the comments. Put I'm ready in the comments so I know that you're ready for another lesson. And of course, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And you can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can click here to download it or look for the link in the description. And you can keep improving your English with this lesson right now.